lights out. And he is with the U.S. Forestry Department and has a lot of other opportunities to share. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing today? Good. Good. How was first period? Good. Awesome. Boring. Boring. Hopefully, I won't be that boring. Hopefully. I don't know. The last bunch was kind of like towards the end, like, uh, okay. Anyway, I am here today to speak with you about careers and occupations and job opportunities, uh, primarily in forestry, but I have a lot of military in my history, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that too. Um, just to, you know, some, because it means a lot to me and, and it meant to me, a lot to me when I was young and, and um, I just want to make sure, you know, maybe you guys know everything that's out there. I'm not an army recruiter, I'm just, but I am putting my military plug in, I guess, for stuff. How many, um, if I can start off with a question on my own, and I'm like very interactive as a speaker. I don't want to just be standing up here talking. I want you guys asking questions. Like if I say something and you got a question, don't wait. Just stick your hand up and be like, hey, Mr. Compson, uh, blah, blah, blah. you know, I'm, I'm, I love that. And I, and I definitely want us to have a lot of discussion after I'm done yakking for a little while. But I want to start off. How many of you guys have taken the ASVAP? Let's see, one, two, three, four. Show a hand, see over here. Okay, not really all that many of you, but um, you guys know what the ASVAP is? Everybody know? Okay. The ASVAB is it's called the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. And basically, it's um, if you're interested at all in the military, um, and even if you're not interested in the military, it's a good test to take to uh, kind of measure your aptitude, your natural aptitude or abilities, right? Um, I took it when I was like 16 years old in the 10th grade. You guys are all seniors, aren't you? Yeah. You're on the halfway out the door. How many of y'all are going to college? A big bunch of you. Great. Um, how many of you are going to like some kind of um, educational program? Not college. Trade. Great. Trade school. I don't even know what the term is. Awesome. So I, I usually feel like you trade school people. Uh, I had a lot of friends that did trade school and went, launched right into whatever they were going to do. I had no clue what I wanted to do in high school or for even years after that. Um, but uh, I did take the ASVAB in high school and because my GPA kind of sucked in high school. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so college wasn't looking like much of an opportunity for me. Um, so when I was 17 and a senior, I, I enlisted in the Marines through the delayed entry program. I hadn't even graduated yet. Any, uh, any of you guys thinking about the military after high school? Nobody? Oh, okay. Awesome. What, what's your, in, like, where are you with it? Um, I want to go to the Marines, but... Really? Awesome. Have you had the ASVAB? You didn't raise your hand for the ASVAB? No, I didn't. Okay. It's, uh, just call our recruiter up. Yeah. He can... Yeah, that's great. 
I saw one other hand somewhere. I thought. Okay. Anyway. The benefit of going into the military when you're young that I didn't even really think that much about it. I just knew I couldn't go to college. I didn't have any job opportunities. Mom and dad I wouldn't, weren't going to pay for me to go you know, do as poorly as I did in high school and college and, and so I joined the military. Um, but after a few years in the military, I was more mature and made up in my mind that I needed to go to school and figure out what the heck I was going to do with the rest of my life. So while I was in the military, I signed up for the GI Bill. And fortunately, because I was a veteran, um, and that gave me kind of a leg up on other people that were applying. I was able to get into Virginia Tech. And, and the GI Bill paid for all of it. And that was a great uh, launch for me in life that um, honestly, till I enlisted, I hadn't done a whole lot to to build up and get ready for my future. But but that, that the military really saved me. It did. Um, and gave me a good start in life. So anyway, all of you, whether you're interested in the military or not, I encourage you to take the ASVAB just because, again, it's an aptitude test. How many of you have had the SAT? Okay, a couple. Yep, that's another um, entrance exam. But the ASVAB is not all like the SAT, but it's a good, good placement test. And I encourage, encourage all of you to do that, just to keep your options open. And in, in the military, is, it's a great thing to get you started. As you can see, Lieutenant Colonel U.S. Army Reserves retired. I just retired in August of this year from the Army Reserves. So my affiliation with the military was a long time. Started off as a Marine, wound up as a Army Reserve soldier. So, but my lifelong career and occupation and love has been as a forester. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys mainly about today, is forestry. How many of y'all like the outdoors? Show of hands if you like the outdoors, do stuff outdoors. About, <laughs> okay, a big the majority of you do. Any of you have parents? that uh, have forestry related or outdoor occupations, farming or, or logging, no loggers in the family or, oh, okay. Yep, yeah. what's, uh, what's, what specifically do they do? They will have two sides of it, have two different things. Two different individual families in my family that dog. Oh, wow. Okay. Gardener okay, gardeners. Yeah, I I've, I've probably. <laughs> that sounds very familiar. That's the jail hardwoods that I was referring to. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I'm a forester, and when I went to Virginia Tech, that's what I studied at school. And the last group, I talked a lot about forestry and what I realized was I talked so much about forestry and trees and stuff that 
when I got to the occupational stuff, <laughs> I, there was like five, 10 minutes left and I kind of had to breeze through that really quickly. So I thought, uh, I will go right into talking about forestry and occupations and then we'll go back and talk about general forestry things that I like. Um, so I just want to make you guys give you like an overview of forestry and how many of you have prepared questions for me today. A little bird told me that you guys were supposed to prepare me some questions ahead of time. Oh my gosh, y'all are being very stubborn about raising your hands. I know you did your homework. <laughs> okay, anyway, forestry job areas. For forestry is pretty much divided um, into two domains. There's the government related forestry jobs and then there's private slash industry forestry jobs. And in the government forestry jobs there's it starts at the top with the federal government and comes pretty much all the way down to the local government and even cities that have forestry jobs. And what anybody, what do you think is the reason that the federal government would have foresters or forestry related occupations? How about you, young man? What's your name? Uh, Sam. Sam? That's my son's name. <laughs> Good name, Sam. Any idea? Okay. Do you think there's much federal land in the United States? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the whole reason. There's tons of national forest and federal land in the U.S. and someone's got to manage that for the government. So there's tons of job opportunities at the federal level. State level, county level, kind of the same thing. Um, the states generally take, uh, have their own forestry departments. The Virginia Department of Forestry, the North Carolina Department of Forestry. And so the states very much have their um, own regulations and guidelines for the management of forest within the state. And that applies to all the government land that's within the state. They don't have a whole lot of jurisdiction over federal land, but even private land falls under the jurisdiction of the Department of Forestry within the states. So private landowners still have their private landowner rights, but they have to comply with the regulations of the state. City. Does that seem weird to you guys? Anybody got an idea? I want to make a stab at why a city would have a forester? Ah, go ahead, young man, speak up. That's pretty much the gist of it right there. What's your name? Huh? Dieter. Dieter. Dieter kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, any of you ever been to Charleston, South Carolina? Mm -hmm. Beautiful city, right? What, 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 do you, what do you notice about trees in Charleston, South Carolina? Big, huge, beautiful live oak trees. Those trees are like the essence and the spirit of the city itself. They, those trees have a lot of value to the city and the population of people that lives there. And the, it's a lot of management that goes along with, with trees in any urban environment. Um, 
there's many trees that have very um, large significance to towns and cities all over the world. So that's, that's where city forestry comes in. And they generally, the title for a forester in the city is an urban forester. Um, and every large city, you can look them up. Um, there's urban foresters, usually five or six. For instance, the city that I live in in North Carolina, Winston-Salem, has about um, six people on staff. And they have eight positions, and I say they have six people. I think it's probably closer to four or five. About half their forestry positions in the city aren't even filled because they don't have people who are qualified to fill them. So that tells you about job opportunities. You know. mm, private. Private job opportunities. That's where most people um, work in the forest industry or in forestry. Um, it, in private jobs. You have industrial forestry jobs, um, forest management jobs, working for private landowners or landowner groups that own large tracts of forestry land. And then you have um, non-governmental or organization jobs like the Sierra Club and the Nature Conservancy. And then you have mostly what I do, which is consulting and our, or uh, wood dealing, to use a coin of phrase. Uh, anybody have any idea how important the forest products industry is within the state of Virginia. Like, where do you think it would rank out of the top 10 industries in Virginia as far as money and employment? Anybody got any guesses? Throw a number up. How about PFG? What's PFG stand for? Oh, okay. What's your name, young man? Grayson. Grayson. Cool. Take your guess. <coughs> you said one through ten. Uh huh. Four. Very close. Three. It's a third top industry in the state of Virginia. Think about that. That's. It actually works out to billions of dollars in the state of Virginia from forestry, timber harvesting, um, sawmill production, other forest produ product mills. There's over 100,000 people in the state of Virginia that work in the forest industry or related forestry. And most of those are not government jobs. Like maybe, maybe 10% are government jobs, maybe not even that. Um, so there's a huge, huge, huge number of job opportunities in the private industry. Uh, as a consultant, I'll tell you a little bit about myself in forestry. Um, I work for myself. I have a forestry consulting company. Uh, I work, I contract with private landowners and companies, usually doing technical forestry stuff. Um, and I, um, a lot of times I sell timber for landowners like a realtor does for a commission. 
but also I, I almost every year get a contract with the state of Virginia and Tennessee um, doing pest uh, invasive species management of insects that impact the forest. Um, and it's a pretty lucrative contract. It's an interesting job. How many, anybody ever heard of the gypsy moth or the spongy moth? Okay, I'll talk a little bit about that later. But that's, that's what the um, states of Virginia and Tennessee actually hire me to go out and put these little green bug traps up all over the county in different counties. Y'all ever seen the little bug traps yeah. hanging on the side of the road? Some of you, maybe? Yeah, that's, that's one of the things I do in the course of my forestry work. Do you guys know what invasive species means? Yeah, species that are invasive. That's a good one. What about what does that mean? The the invasive places they're not supposed to be. They also obviously what is that related to forestry? Like bugs and stuff that aren't native to one area come in and they can destroy the ecosystem. Yeah, that's a good job. Very good. He's he's been biology class. Where'd you learn that? Biology? Yeah. Here? Oh, okay. That's great. Well, I wouldn't even like. Does that interest you? Oh, it was just like ninth grade. Yeah. Grade. That's, that's good, though, that you retain that. Um, and I actually have a slide up here to talk about that. We could. We'll default to that slide in a minute, though. But um, before I leave. This, well, next let's talk about ch -ch -ch types of forestry jobs, which I have talked about a little bit already, but ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, I kind of just did a listing. Y'all look that over, and if you want to ask me about any questions, about any of those specific job occupations, I can tell you a lot about them because I've had a lot to do with pretty much everything up there except for state nursery employees. I've dealt with most of those types of jobs. Any ever of you ever think about forest fighting? Forest fire fighting? There you can actually go to the local department of forestry right now and tell them you want to take forest fighting class and the government will pay you, the local state government will pay you to go to Virginia Tech, probably the training will probably be at Virginia Tech or some forestry department office locally, and they will pay you to take forestry, forest fighting class, and they'll put you on call, and if there's a local forest fire, they will call you up, and I think anything in excess of eight hours a day you get paid like overtime or double overtime I don't know but sometimes you go and and literally you might be doing something as simple as like raking leaves out to clear a spot where the forest won't you know as a break in the forest fire but I actually when I was a little bit older than you guys going through college I took that course and got called out on a couple of fires and it was neat. It was a really neat experience because I got paid well when I needed money. And it was, you know, not like a regular job. You know, they just call you up. Hey, can you come? We got to fight a forest fire. And I went out and did it. It was pretty cool. Um, but it's a very, uh, uh, sadly, it's a growing thing right now. 
um, the forest fighting industry, forestry firefighting industry. Uh, how many of you heard about the forest fires in Canada this summer? Several of you? Yeah, they were massive. They were on the western side of the country, but we even got a lot of smog and stuff here. Yeah, burned millions of acres in Canada. But I looked it up last night. It was something stupid like 34 million acres, which you can't even, I mean, it's like half the size of the state of Virginia or something that burn, re burn really badly. And think about Canada. That's nothing but forest up there. Like that's forestry is an even bigger industry in Canada per capita than in the U.S. But um, do you think that's something that was just a fluke? Or it's gonna go away. Uh, I mean, what what do you what do you guys think? All the forest fires are related to that are going on in the world right now. Any ideas? Anybody want to throw out a theory? Well, it's kind of it's a little bit more larger in scope than that. Like, okay, this what's going on, and I'm sure you guys have heard this a lot before. Global climate change, global warming. It's you know it's um, making a lot more dry conditions in places that haven't traditionally been dry. With, and so it's, it's something um, like all the weird weather, it's not gonna go away anytime soon. It's, you know, we'll, we'll see a lot more of that kind of thing in the future. So that's, that's pretty interesting because there's a whole, you know, there's a forestry, forest fire fighting thing that's only gonna grow um, but there's a whole industry that's springing up also around just um, disaster related uh, occupations like debris removal and stuff like that. So, who, yes? I have a question. Is the, is the nursery like baby trees? That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, they call it a nursery. And, and usually nurseries are run as part of the state forestry department. They're in charge of that and um, they give out like millions of trees to landowners. Or I think landowners have to purchase them, but that's what that is, state run programs. And that, that, of course, you know, they have to have people that are knowledgeable and skilled in doing that or interested in it. Other questions to do with occupations, with forestry-related stuff. I must be doing a really good job if you guys don't have any questions. Okay, yes. Um, for a lot of these jobs, do you have to go to college? Um, well, not necessarily for your college. Um, I have a l lady, um, she and I are good friends. She's a peer of mine. Um, she's employed by Columbia Forest Products. Um, and she's a high level well-paid forester. She had three kids, uh, and her youngest son was in his 30s. She got divorced, and she decided 
she wanted she loved the outdoors and she wanted to do some kind of forestry job and she went to um, a short I want to say year and a half program at a local community college um, and started her career in her late 30s in forestry and yeah she very smart lady though and ambitious but no there's there's I know lots of foresters that didn't go to college that just had the desire to be a forester and like work with a department of forestry um, like I was telling you about uh, getting the forest fighting certificate you know start off that way and maybe did some volunteer work or you know if you have um, did a lot of there's a lot of vocational or that's not the right word there's a lot of technical training if you are interested in it and you pursue it that you can get that you know will give you experience and get you qualifications to move up and do other things like you know foresters are extremely I mean loggers are extremely knowledgeable about equipment operation and all kinds of acti activities and most I would say a lot of loggers haven't been to, to college you know and they own a million dollars worth of equipment and and oftentimes know a lot about you know forestry and timber and resources and you know the guys they hire are usually just skilled equipment operators so uh, what's your favorite part about being a forester why well, i'm working outdoors all the time of course that's you know i love the outdoors so when you're uh i i very much enjoy going places i've never been like you know a new valley or patch of woods or a mountain or something yes uh i prefer working honestly in the winter because ticks love me and they eat me up in the spring and summer. I don't know what it is about my body chemistry. If there's a tick in the woods, it seems like it winds up biting me. So, But, I mean, all year round, I'm happy to be in the woods. But, uh, you know, of course, you know, you're outside. You just, you know, you're going to get wet. You're going to freeze. You're going to burn up. So, but, yeah. I love the mountains because it's, I like working in the mountains because it's beautiful and, you know, it's not so hot. Like, I don't think I would enjoy it much at all down, you know, where it was further south, where it's flat and more pine trees, boring. So. Any other occupational questions? So more on the right, it's like they may not have to go to college right away versus, well, there's interns on the left. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's tons. It doesn't pay that great. There's tons of government. Um, employment opportunities um, with the State Department of Forestry for sure. Uh, they're always trying to contract people to do um, trail maintenance, treatment of invasive species, um, a lot of the grunt work. They, it, they're government employees, they get a salary, so they love to contract the work out to someone else, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. So we go camping quite a bit, and a lot of these trails, some of them say they're either not donated by the 
job that they are taking care of by certain groups and stuff like that. But the majority of it is the forestry department's responsibility, right? Right, yep. The Forest Service roads, a lot of that. Um, the Forest Service does a lot of firefighting too. Is the forest also the one to do the markers, like go this way for that trail, or you know, follow that? Yeah, trail maintenance. That's what that falls under. Yep. Let's go ahead, me. What's your favorite tree? My favorite tree is the white oak. It's, first of all, it's a very beautiful tree. Um, it makes acorns. When I was a kid growing up at my granny's house, she had these huge white oak trees, which would just drop millions of acorns and there'd always be squirrels out there not squirrel hunt and but um, white oak is very um, important within the industry because the properties of the wood are like coveted all over the world um, use them in uh, staves for barrels um, there's, I couldn't even begin to tell you all the things that they use white oak wood for. And like in the forest, in a normal like forest environment where you have white oaks that are growing up tall and straight for timber, you can have individual white oak trees f to the landowner now can be easily worth a thousand dollars. So if you, your dad had 50 acres behind his house that was covered up in timber, he, and it had white oak in it, he, his, just the timber value could be, per acre could be thousands and thousands of dollars. Which, and that fascinates me, you know, the money value end of it. But, but uh, I, I think, and white oaks are very long lived. Um, they're one of the longest lived trees on the East Coast. They can live up to like 600 years. So, pretty, pretty amazing, I think. Yep. Um, we talked a little bit about invasive species, right? There's trees that are invasive species too. Um, there's a tree called the tree of heaven or Ailanthus altissima. That's a scientific name. And it's really started um, there's a lot of it around Franklin County. Like, if you look in the edges of old fields, a lot of times there'll be these tall, skinny, fast-growing little gray trunk trees. That's um, Tree of Heaven. Paradise trees. Paradise trees, yeah. And, uh, they're, they're just a junk species. They don't really have any commercial value. They're not good for wildlife. They were introduced here from Asia and they just kind of choke out a lot of other trees because they grow so fast. They compete a lot with yellow poplar, so I, I don't like them at all. They just, they, they don't do anything for our forest. Good question. So, you can tell I know a little bit about trees. Kind of so. <laughs> hmm? Kind of benefits, like health care, retirement. Oh, um, well, and if you're talking about government jobs, 
Um, the benefits are good. Like any government job, generally the benefits, there will be a lot of health care benefits and retirement benefits and very good job stability. Um, like nobody ever gets fired from a government job. They just leave if they do leave. Um, but the pay is not all that great. You know, you have a great stable job and it's pretty relaxed, low stress, but you're not making a whole lot of money. So I know a lot of government employees that do other things on the side in forestry to make more money. But it's, it's that's kind of nice to have a government job. Now, the industry side is not really the opposite. The um, but the stability, um, it's much higher stress on the industry side. Most jobs are. And, and like, like any um, industry related occupation, it depends more about what company you work for is, um, as far as your pay and the kind of experience that you have. There's tons of good quality companies out there in forest industry. Um, and there's a lot of bad ones out there too. And I've worked for both. But, but uh, if you go the forest industry route, you can definitely make more money. But it'll be higher stress and more unknown for sure. But what I generally have seen in my career is once you develop a good skill set and if you have good values and a good reputation then that will carry you far. Like you'll, you'll do well in forest industry or government jobs but it's all about developing yourself and your skill sets. So. so, I have many wild animal experiences I could tell you about. I have not been, per se, chased by wild animals, um, but I almost always have a dog with me, and I have two dogs right now, one of which is a little 25-pound collie mix. And she used to have this really bad habit where when she was out with me, if we saw a little baby deer, she was gonna chase it. Well, after about the second or third time, the, the mama deer about pawed her into the ground because they were chasing her baby deer, she quit doing that. And I personally saw this and it kind of got to be kind of funny to me because she was being hard-headed, harassing a little baby deer. Did you guys know that? That a doe will protect its baby like that from other animals? they will actually attack a dog to save their baby. And Chase, it's kind of hilarious when you see a doe or a deer like run after a dog trying to pound it in the ground. It's pretty funny looking. And I've, we've also had experiences with coyotes. Um, I've had uh, more than once coyotes try and eat my little collie right in front of me when she goes bullheaded chasing after them. I've seen a lot of bears. Um, one day this year I saw five bears. Generally bears don't want anything to do with people and vice versa in my case. But I had a, uh, a buddy of mine was out cruising timber 
and he happened up on some little cubs in a tree and he thought, oh, I'm going to take some pictures and post this on the internet. Anybody have any idea what happened to him? Go on, take a guess. What's, what's a good policy if you come up on baby cubs in the woods? Please don't touch them. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Yeah. Turn around and go the other way. Yeah, so he, he got the bright idea to take pictures. And um, apparently mama was watching from the wood line and almost ate him for lunch. So he, he made a hasty exit and didn't have any other issues. But I see a lot of rattlesnakes but again if you don't mess with them they don't mess with you so um, but wildlife's part of the interesting part of being a forester any other questions about occupations what you got Um, fortunately, I, the worst injury I've ever had was just tripping over something in the woods and banging my knee up. But um, as, as a quote-unquote forester, uh, you're generally not interacting a lot with heavy equipment are the actual timber harvesting process. Um, like as a logger, timber harvesting is one of the most dangerous jobs there is. And sadly, you know, there's fatalities every year in Virginia from uh, timber harvesting. Usually people that are outside of their piece of equipment or whatever, um, cutting down a tree. Uh, very, very dangerous job, but mm, I've been very fortunate. Um, a big hazard is just uh, being careful with your eyes. It's always, uh, and this is a general rule of thumb, if you're going to go on a hike through the woods, you should have a hat on. It protects your face. Um, from branches and limbs and you know that's that's I hate to wear a hat normally but I always wear one in the woods and you know protection also uh, appropriate footwear and, and clothing but that's all kind of common sense I've taken my wife on a few hikes and she hadn't quite figured it out yet, but she she doesn't go hiking with me much anymore. What type of person would you recommend this occupation to? Um, I would recommend this occupation to anyone who doesn't like working indoors. If you like the outdoors, being a forester is great. Um, I, if you're not afraid to sweat or get bug bit or see a bear, um, if you like to hunt, if you like to fish, about every forester I know likes to hunt, fish, and camp. So if you're uh, indoors person probably not the best occupation for you unless you're more involved um, on the computer sciences end of forestry which also does exist there's a lot of that too um, a lot of nerdy research type stuff that goes on that's above my head Wood sciences is a um, very specialized field in forestry um, because there's so many very important products and chemicals that are derived from wood that I know very little about. So I won't talk much about it, but. 
Uh, let's, you guys interested in learning or talking more about forestry, just general stuff? Because I've got some more slides I can talk about. They're kind of cool. Um, like I was going to touch on the invasive species more, I think. And here, let's see what we got. Any more occupational questions? Job related questions? What's, you didn't raise your hand, did you? No. Nobody raised hand? No, okay. No more questions? Occupationally? I'll move on. But anything pops in your head, just stick your hand up. Do you want to incorporate how about Army? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think I talked about that in the beginning, didn't I? Yeah, like the um, Well, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit more about my, my personal experience, because I think it's kind of relevant. Um, so after I did my time in the Marines, I, of course, had the GI Bill and that was going to pay for my college. And being an outdoors person I was, I was like, OK, I will, uh, I can go this route now, because you know, I've got funds for college. So started lucky enough to get in Virginia Tech, started at Virginia Tech. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to do even then. Uh, so I kind of went in and I thought I wanted to do something with the environment. And um, I wound up in forest resource management, which was the closest thing they had to environmental science at the time. And I quickly found out that I was more interested in uh, industrial forestry, but while I was in college, um, I kind of started missing the military. Um, was getting, you know, the good GI Bill pay, but that only went so far. But I started uh, thinking about the National Guard because the State National Guard has a lot of benefits for people when they're in college. Um, so I joined the Army National Guard in the state of Virginia and started getting a monthly paycheck for going to reserve training. So um, in the course of doing that, I started thinking, well, you know, I'm getting a college degree now. I've got some credits built up. And they had a state officer candidate school program. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll try that out. You know, I'm here already. So I started the state officer candidate school program. And a year and a half later, uh, did two weeks in the summer. And then the next summer, did two more weeks and I got commissioned. I became a commissioned officer in the United States Army. So that was a pretty good plug. Um, big paycheck raise and, and increased responsibilities. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, so there's a lot of routes to becoming an officer, uh, but pretty much all of them have to do with getting a degree, um, some kind of degree. I saw in my military career, I saw a lot of enlisted soldiers that were, had more college education than myself as an officer. And sometimes they would apply for a commission just pay, based upon their education and the military experience 
that they already had, and they would be awarded a commission as an officer in the uh, whatever you know branch they wanted to be in. And so that was pretty eye-opening. There's, of course, officer candidate school programs. Um, like there's a federal program uh, that only requires that you have a college degree or be well on your way to it. And then there's the um, national federal academies like West Point. But I like the route I took pretty good, the state OCS program. It served me well and eventually I got out of the National Guard and went in the Army Reserves. I actually took a break for about five years. Call, went into what they call the inactive reserves. And, but then uh, just before 9-11, I started attending uh, training again and did 21 more years as a reservist before retiring from the Army with a good, when I hit 60, I'll draw a military pension. And the um, health insurance, insurance benefits are great for the reserves. You can get health insurance for your family and yourself for, I think, $230 a month. That's a huge incentive to go the Army or any reserve route, Marine Corps Reserve, Army Reserve, Navy Reserve. It's a great benefit. I knew a lot of people that uh, would just uh, turn, they would attend basic training in the summer and get through the basic training and then come back and start doing the weekend a month thing and have a regular job or be in school and not even miss a beat in their life like they would miss one summer to go to basic training. But the reserves is really easy to join if you qualify, if you take that ASVAB. <laughs> so. Anyway, that, that was kind of my, like, my course and trajectory with the military as it relates to the Army. Let's go back. I'm going to go back in the slides to some of the cool topics, what I think are cool topics. See that guy standing next to the humongous tree? That's an American chestnut. Uh, any of you ever heard of the American chestnut? Nobody? I mean, my grandma, she has like four like, chestnut trees that actually grow chestnuts. I don't know if it's that. Yeah, they, the trees that um, grow chestnuts that your grandma has are actually Chinese chestnuts. Chinese chestnuts. She's got like Six trees. Yeah, and they're real prickly, and you don't want to step on them. <laughs> you ever eat any of them? Yeah. Cool. We used to go pick them off the ground and wash them. Neat. The American chestnut um, was once one of the most predominant trees in the forest on the East Coast. Y'all heard that song, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. That's about, that's about American chestnuts. And they would make nuts just like you're talking about, like the Chinese chestnut. And they're all the animals in the woods, you know, love chestnuts. Farmers would have pigs and just turn them loose in the forest in the fall and let them just eat chestnuts and get fat. And it was a hugely important tree 
for all different, for food and all kinds of products um, because the wood was also very rot resistant. So if you notice, I'm talking about American chestnuts in the past tense. And if you look at this picture, that's obviously from like the 1920s or before that, right? Because the American chestnuts all died, or the large trees died, because a blight or a fungus was introduced from the Chinese chestnut. The Chinese chestnut obviously is not native to the United States. And in the late 1800s, some people brought over Chinese chestnuts and they had this fungus that the American chestnut had no natural defenses to. And by the 1940s, they were all gone. They were all dead, just standing in the woods, dead. And there's actually um, an organizations within the United States now that are crossbreeding Chinese chestnuts and American chestnuts trying to get back the American chestnut. Like, do you see how tall and big and straight this tree is? A Chinese chestnut does not grow that way. A Chinese chestnut looks like a crooked, scraggly tree that if they get this big around, it's a miracle. But they look like a bush. They don't look at all like this. Um, so there's, like I said, there's the, I think it's called the American Chestnut Foundation. Um, they have sites in Virginia where they're trying to breed and get back American chestnuts that are resistant to this fungus. Now, does that mean if you go into the forest, you'll never seen, see an American chestnut? Yeah, they're still out there. And they get about this big around, and they grow up out of roots left over from trees like this. And you'll see the long pointy leaves that are American chestnut leaves, and then the fungus gets in them and they die. And then they start trying to grow again from the roots. In a, in a very few times in my career, um, I've been in literally thousands and thousands of acres of hardwood forest, and I know what, what they look like, right? And a few times I've seen American chestnuts that for whatever reason were resistant to the blight that would be mature trees in the woods.